Hi, I'm Keena Nisley, and this is The Life of the Land is in Its Real Estate. So I'm an agent at Keller Williams Honolulu, and today I have an awesome guest. I have John Kiefer, who has moved to guaranteed rate. He is an amazing lender here on this island. So welcome, John. Thanks for joining us. Oh, thank you so much, Keena. So nice. Thank you for the nice introduction. I appreciate it. And thanks for having me. Yes. So tell us a little bit about yourself. Yeah, sure. Thank you. I, uh, I'm, a, I'm a mortgage uh, mortgage lender and I moved uh, recently moved about three months ago. I moved to Guaranteed Rate as the Vice President of Mortgage Lending here on Oahu. And uh, I've, got the, I've got incredible rates and service and quick turn times and, uh, and quick processes. And uh, I'm ready to just keep moving forward. So great. Yeah. So we are in the middle of a crazy market. I think yes. it's the middle. We don't have a way of knowing. But we do know that in May, we did hit a record for Oahu for single family homes, reached $978,000 wow. for a three bedroom, two bath single family home, which is, is just crazy. Um, and they are selling at a record pace. We had 403 sales last month compared to 248 the May before. Now we were in a lockdown in the May before, but that is a 63% increase in the number of sales of single family homes um, from year to year, which to me is just crazy. So are, are you seeing a lot more mortgage applications come through? What are you seeing? Yes, yes, that's 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 so true. Um, we're seeing a lot of mortgage applications. Um, last year, I would say the refinance business was just out of control. It was we we could barely keep up. There were so many refinances going right, and just like ever, just like we predicted, twenty twenty one became a purchase market. So we're getting lots of of new um, purchase mortgage applications every week. We get more. I mean, now and then there'll be a little uptick in the rates, and things will slow down just a little bit. But as you've seen and what you just mentioned about homes are just flying off the market, you know, most, most people need a mortgage, not all these days. And uh, because of that, we get a lot of mortgage applications every day and, and week over week, it's, it's increased quite a bit. So, so, yes, and we are seeing that these homes are going over asking. 58% of the homes sold in Maine went over asking. So basically, that list price you see is just the suggested starting point. Yeah. Um, we are also seeing condos go over asking, mostly in the 600 to 699 range. Um, 38% of those went over asking, which I know eight months ago, we didn't know what the condo market was going to do, but it has also just taken off. So, so yeah, so that is. It's the market is crazy. So you talked about the rate maybe going um, up a tick. So yes. where are the rates right now? Yeah, that's that's another great question. The rates the rates were were at historically low interest rates. Of course, we have been for over a year now. Um, there's been a slight uptick um, after Chairman Powell um, made some comments about inflation last week, but it, it has since recovered. And I can give you some of the details on that. But um, for, for VA loans, we're still down in the, in the low to mid three uh, twos. So we're still right where we were um, last year, just a little bit higher. And then for conventional loans, we're still under three, you know, with the, the homes that, that you were talking about that are, you know, in the million, million plus range, 980,000, whatever that super high number was, you know, with 20% down, you know, those homes are going to be with good credit. Those homes are going to be under 3% as, as a rate right now without, without paying points for those. Um, it's funny with condos, on the other hand, you know how you mentioned the condos, you know, we're not really sure. We're not really sure how they're going to, how they're going to react or what the, uh, you know, what, what it's going to be like for condos. But in my experience, and my, my experience is just anecdotal with lending. I don't have my, I don't have a pulse on the market as much as you do on the, sales side but um i'm seeing that the folks that are missing out on those higher priced homes are actually they just want to move so badly that they'll just buy a bigger condo than the whatever home they're living in now just so that they can buy a home now while rates are low 
And so um, I, I, I think, uh, I don't know if this is going to be the case, but I think the condo prices are going to start going up too. I think that uh, there's, there's just not enough inventory at that higher price point that people are going to start looking at condos more. And uh, I, I think that's what, what's going to happen. What, what, what are you seeing in that? Well, so I will tell you that I have sold listings um, of condos to people who were shopping for single family homes. And they, I hate to say gave up, but in a sense, they gave up. They couldn't get into a single family home. They wanted to move here. They're moving here for their job. They want to set their kids up in school. And so they go and they purchase a condo that was comparable to a single family home um, as far as space and, and amenities and and price. And yeah, so I have seen them, um, people who, who are, you know, in lieu of a single family home choosing to go condos. Yes. And, I and I will tell you eight months ago when somebody came to me with a listing for a condo, I was like, Oh, but now I'm like, yes, yeah. <laughs> because yes. they are, they are going. I mean, we saw in, in condos, we saw an increase in, in price by 14% from last year and a hundred and 35% for the number of sales. So, so a year ago, May, we sold 254 condos. Last May, we sold 598. Wow. wow that's so a that big just tells you that people are buying condos and people are, are paying top dollar for them now, where, like I said, eight months ago, we weren't quite sure where it was going to go. Yeah. Uh, so, yeah. The higher, the high end condos, are they also selling? Because I'm seeing them. Like a year ago, uh, the luxury homes were sitting on the market and it was just tough to sell. Now they fly off the market, multiple offers, okay. hundreds of thousands over asking. Um, and I'm, I'm noticing, and again, this is anecdotal. I'm noticing the higher end condos are sitting, just kind of sitting there. And the ones that are in a 600,000 range, 700,000 range are flying. Is that, is is that the norm or is that just what I'm seeing? No, the ones in 600 to 699 were, are the ones that are getting the over asking price. That's about, but if you think about that, 600 to 699, someone who's approved at 800, 900,000 can then turn around and buy a $700,000 condo. Because right. once they take into account the uh, maintenance fees, right. which does impact their buying power, it's about the range they're at. 600 sure. to 700,000. So, so it is what, what we're seeing. So it's not your imagination. <laughs> All right. So, so sometimes I see things that are a little bit of an anomaly because I'm on the lending side, right? Yes. So mm -hmm. I, I like to say it's anecdotal. This is just what I see. I'm not following the market like you are, you know, like listing and selling homes. So thanks for clarifying that. Uh, yes. Yes. I'm following it every day and we are seeing more luxury, um, than we were seeing last year, just because I, I watch the souls every day and, right, and you right. are seeing four or $5 million closings pop up, you know, at yes. least a few every day, which is, it means, you know, the market is going in the right way. Yeah. So with the rates, we are still relatively low. Um, Cause I know my parents paid 18% for their first house they bought at Port Wainini, California, outside the Naval base. Um, so these rates we have now are incredible compared to what incredible. we're paying. But yeah. what what do you think we can expect to see? Um, just a crystal ball. We my crystal ball. <laughs> what is my, what's my, in your crystal ball? My crystal ball isn't as see through as it used to be because <laughs> I, I thought I knew what was going to happen, and then things change. Like like you follow the market every day for the, what's listed and what's sold. I do the same thing with rates every day, right? And the mortgage backed securities and all of those things. So. Um, Basically, it depends on inflation, and if so, we're we're recording this recording this on a, on a, on Wednesday, right? If we recorded this last Wednesday, I would have a different answer, um, because last Wednesday is when the Fed had their their meeting that they hold um, periodically every year, right? And and Chairman Powell from the Fed made some comments about inflation and how um, he's expecting it to spike. And the market overreacted and the rates jumped up all over the place. And then um, the, the, the days after that, he had some more comments and he said, no, we're not going to superficially increase inflation because when inflation goes up, rates are going to go up. Every prices of everything goes up. And uh, so now, even today, he made more comments saying that it's, we're not going to push it because 
um, the economy is bouncing back now because the you know we're opening back up and people are going back to work. So this this increase in in um, in the economic activity, if we if we increase inflation based on that, it's not a real marker because we have the spike because now everybody's going back to work. So it's not something that they want to engage inflation on, which is something really smart that he said. I was really happy to hear that. And now rates are back to where they were last Tuesday. So that's the thing. The spikes just go up and down. Um, another thing about the, for the crystal ball. So today um, they announced that the FH, the F, the FHFA, the Federal Housing Admission, uh, Administration um, chairman, can be fired by the president. He can be. I mean, they took it all the way up in the courts because um, the previous administration said that they could fire him at will. And, and they couldn't at that time. So they had to fight for it. It's a, it's a really long, somewhat interesting story. Um, feel free to look it up. I won't spend our time on that now. But his name is Mark Calabria. And I think last time, last time I was on the show last year, I think I was just kind of like just giving him the business because I was so upset with him, right? Well, and he couldn't be fired. That's the thing. He couldn't be fired by anyone. Like he can't be fired Ex except for a cause. If there's cause, he can be. But difference in the pains and stuff like that, he couldn't be fired. So now they won, they won the, the appeal that they can. And today they fired him. Like oh. today, he's out. So, okay. So and what are we going to see from exactly. that? That's why, I, that's why my crystal ball is murky right now. Because <laughs> what Mark Calabria did was he put, he, he added a half a percentage point fee to all refinances. He did that probably six, nine months ago, maybe nine months ago. And so the amount of refinances tanked at that point, right? Because now that's a half a point higher than it was. So some people, there wasn't really a big benefit to, to refinancing. And for some people, it wasn't worth it. So we don't know if that's going to go away. Hopefully it does. And another thing is that um, he instituted any investment property um, loan, refinance or otherwise. Um, simply, if, if a company has... If a company sells, if a company has 7% or more of investment properties in its portfolio and they sell that to, to the government, then there's going to be a hit on those two. So basically, it's another fee that they're collecting on investment properties. That one should go away for sure. Yeah, I know, right? It's like, what is this guy doing? I, I read this morning that because of his, um, his, his actions, he has brought in $124 billion into the, into the, uh, the FHFA. And, uh, and what, what, for what? I mean, he's coming from us at a time, not us, but us, the homeowners and taxpayers at a time when, you know, a lot, a lot of people don't have the ability to pay extra for a mortgage when the whole point was to, to refinance into a, a a lower rate so you can save some money, right? Instead, we got hit with the tax. So he's out. Who's who they're gonna appoint into his place? Who knows? This is brand new news from this morning. So um prior to that, my my thoughts were that we're gonna slowly tick up as we get to the end of the year, just as you know, the economy opens up, inflation starts to tick up a little bit and people are buying things. But now I, I, I think that's probably the course, but it could be a slower increase than I expected. There's the long-winded story. Yeah. <laughs> so we do know the market's a little crazy, and now we don't quite know are we in, you know the murky crystal ball. So should folks buy now? Should they wait to buy? What, what do you give them as, I would. as your opinion? Yeah, I would definitely buy now. Just because we don't know what these rates are going to do, we're, we're historically low, like we always like what, we, what we've been talking about. Um, and you know, the prices are going to continue to go up. Rates are going to start to go up. Until then, I mean, it's going it, to—it's perfect timing to, to buy a home. You're going to save money um, if you wait. The cost of waiting is too high. So, um, like, let's say you're going to buy a home for eight hundred thousand. Let's say you have a six hundred thousand dollar mortgage, right? 
you know, if that's going to be about um, 18, 19, maybe $2,000 a month, just the principal and interest, right? Um, if you wait until next year, the rate's going to be higher. So that's going to be a little bit higher monthly payment and the price is going to be higher. So you're going to need more money down to still get that same, that same rate. So long story short, you should buy now if you can. And if you can't, you should start planning on, on doing it as soon as you can. Oh, yeah. So we are, I know we both sat through a great economist. I don't know if we can name him. Um, <laughs> we have to pay to name him. But phenomenal economist here on Island. And he also recommended that people buy now based on the fact that the demand is not going to go down and the inventory is not going to go up. So especially right. here on Oahu, because we're so limited, right, with right. Um, land to build yep. and the demand, we're not seeing any less of a demand. Um, so he also recommended that we buy now, which is easy to say, but as as all real estate agents know, and probably you too, I'm sure you've written quite a few pre-approval letters um, and the offers don't get accepted. So I know I'm writing a lot of offers to only be told no. Yes. Um, and keeping that spirit up um, with with your buyers is difficult. You know, you have to be a therapist, a cheerleader, and 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 you're you know just keep trying. Do not give up. Um, yes. What what are some strategies that you are seeing to get offers accepted? Yeah, that's great. That's great. Um, and you have to be creative now to get offers accepted. It can't be just I've got twenty percent down and I'm a strong well-qualified buyer anymore. It has to be more than that. Right. Um, and you're right. We have to be, we have to be motivators too. Like we have to be like the Tony Robbins types. So I'm like, okay, we're going to stick it out. This is, you know, <laughs> you got to have perseverance and grit and all this thing. And it's so true in this market. You really have to. Um, yeah. So there's different strategies for the, for the higher end homes um, with the, with the larger down payments. Um, you can, you know, with an escalation clause, meaning, you know, you, you agree to pay, the, the buyer agrees to pay more than the, the agreed upon price. If the appraisal, I'm sorry, then the appraised value, if the appraisal comes in a certain price and we agreed at this price, then they agree to go up to that price, regardless of what the appraisal is, right? And the appraisal clause. Um, and so we have some, we have some strategies around that. Um, and it has to do with the loan to value of, of a loan. So like, let's say, let's say somebody wants, they, they, they're going to have a conventional loan and the loan to, and, and they need it to be 80%, 20% down minimum, but they, they write the offer and they're going to put in, you know, 30% down, but then the appraisal comes back and it's lower than the price. And if that price is within that 10% difference. They don't have. They don't have to come out of pocket. We can just lower the down payment amount. Okay, so yeah. there are some tricks. That there are some tricks, but that, that's that's um that's more on the on the buyer side, you know, to help them put in and you know feel confident they can put in an offer to win a home that's you know over what they feel is their their comfort zone possibly. Right? They have to they have to think differently and they have to be aggressive. And um, like I, I'm dealing with one today with um, seven hundred thousand dollar down payment, and we're competing with someone with a similar offer, and it's probably I, I don't know I don't know how many hundreds of thousands over the asking price. I, I lost track. Yeah. But that strategy that I just spoke about is the one we're going to use if we win and the appraisal comes in lower than the appraised value. So. The more sellers agents know about that strategy, I think that they will see that those types of homes with the larger down payments are, are less risky, even though the escalation clause is higher. And I know we're getting kind of too deep in the woods for our audience, but um, yeah. strategies no, that, no, that information. Okay, great. So strategies that that I use and my team uses is that we always call the, the seller's agent. And let them know that we've vetted, we vetted the buyer. We've told them all, up, you know, how great they are, and we looked at the taxes, and then we've looked at their W twos and their pay stubs, and run the credit, and we've run them through the approval process, so they're already good to go. Okay, and that back back a year, a year and a half, two years ago, people just weren't doing that, but now you have to do that 
at minimum, if you're the lender, you have to, you just have to, and you have to be able to, you know, tell them that you're to answer their calls. If you have any questions, call me. And then you have to really follow up with that. So we, uh, we sometimes send videos to the seller's agent about how, you know, how, how wonderful our borrow is and how great we are as lenders. And we're going to close this thing in X number of days. Um, you know, there's those kind of strategies. What, what, what have you been doing on the, on the buyer side to, to win? So we have been um, the buyer side paying, you know, covering termite, covering, right. um, which, you know, with the VA buyer, the VA buyer cannot pay for the termite, but I can as the right. buyer's agent. Yeah. Um, but even with my conventionals, um, making there are basically no contingencies, no cleaning. I'll cover that. I'll cover right. the termite. I'll cover yeah. the survey. Um, so there's the, basically the seller can kind of go and walk away, right? Yes. Um, and no added expenses. And then relationships are so valuable in this market. Um, call that, you know, calling the other agent, being kind and being yes. kind on both sides. Cause I don't tell you, I do have listings also. And, and I used to always, I remember when I started real estate, I couldn't wait to have listings. And now it's kind of brutal. Um, sure. You're getting you know, kind of beat up on. I, I have days where my husband's like, going, man, you look exhausted. And it's like, yeah, I had yeah. two listings with offers due today. And yeah. it, um, yeah, be nice to the listing agent. Yes. <laughs> so, um, yes. That's because it's, it's not easy and, and realize we're the listing agent we're, we're presenting, right. not picking. You're not making uh, the choice. Yes. You're so advising that. and, and yeah. educating, right? Yeah. So and, I've had some, some get pretty upset with me. I'm kind of like, I don't yes. know. But, yeah. Yes, yes. And, and the so, relationship is really important. It, it, I mean, if you as the, you know, the seller's agent or the buyer's agent, if you know the other agent and you have a good um, reputation and rapport with that person, they know it's going to be smooth. And if there's any obstacles that will be handled with professionalism and, and class, yeah. it goes a long way. And the same goes for the, on the lending side too, because, um, you know, um, you and I have been doing this long enough that, you know, we've built up, you know, quite a few, you know, a lot of relationships that are strong and solid and people know how we work and they know how we operate. And um, I, I had a, I had an agent trying to get, you know, as a listing agent, you get calls all the time. Can we see the home? Can we see the home? Can we see the home? Right. <laughs> well, this agent was so tired of those calls that he wasn't answering agents calls. And, and I was working with a realtor who um, she was brand fairly new. So, you know, people don't really know her name much, right? They know the company and stuff. She couldn't get him to answer the phone. I'm like, oh, I know that guy. Let me call him. So I called him up and he answered. But he was just tired of realtors calling him. So he picks up the phone. Hey, John. I'm like, hey, man. Hey, our buyers want to see this place. Okay, here's a lockbox num lock box number. Perfect. It so, is totally. It is relationship and reputation. Yeah. It, it has a lot to do with it. So as I, you always want to pick an agent. It doesn't have to be me, but you do always want to pick an agent with a good reputation and a lender with a good reputation. Yeah. So yes. now what if folks do want to buy and they've been affected by COVID? They, they didn't work for a year. Um, what, what should they be doing to, to recover and, and get into a position to buy? That's a good question. That's a, that's a tough one. I mean, if they've been, if they haven't been working, if they're back to work, then they can qualify for, well, we, we can look at their income as if they were working the whole time. As long oh. as they're back to work full time again, and they're back to where they were last year when they were last working, then it's okay. I mean, everyone knows that there was a pause button on okay. a lot of people's employment, right? Um, so then the tricky part with that is, you know, down payment and and things like that. And hopefully they didn't get into too much debt while they weren't working. An interesting thing about, about the um, unemployment and the uh, stimulus check. Thank you. <laughs> A stimulus check. Yeah. I didn't get one. But, okay. I, I didn't either. Um, so but I think now do you, it, can you count the stimulus check in you your can. income? You can't, but you, they can use it to, for a down payment. Okay. Um, what I learned about the stimulus checks is that um, people, they were meant to, I think there were two, maybe three stimulus checks that went out over the last year, right? They were meant for people to use to spend, to get the economy going and to, you know, help with groceries and things for people who, who really need it. A lot of people didn't really need it 
but they took it. Of course, it's free money and they didn't spend it. They saved it. Wow. They saved it. And uh, a famous economist who I, whose name, again, we can't really bring up was talking (laughs) about this. And after I heard him talk about that, I looked it up myself. I'm like, wait, what is that true? And sure enough, when stimulus checks go out, people who don't need the people who need them, they use it. Of course, gas in their cars, food on the table, clothes on their kids' backs, right? But the people who didn't need it, they just put it in the bank. Think rainy day, like I need this in case the bottom falls out of my work, yeah. right? Well, the bottom isn't falling out for a lot of people now, right? It's kind of becoming more solid. So now there are people that have thousands of extra dollars that they didn't have before. And I'm saying, why not use that for your own home? And not have to pay rent or live with your parents. Even though living with your parents is fine too. But who doesn't want to own their own home and write off all that all that interest on your taxes and have all those deductions, right? Yes. So yeah. So great idea. Well, thank you for so much. You know, thank you so much. I always learn so much when I talk with you. Oh, thank you. And yes. So if anyone is looking to buy or invest in real estate. I can connect you with John. He's a great yeah. lender. He's a great company. And I will see you all in a couple of weeks. And this has been The Life of the Land is awesome. in its real estate. And I will talk to you all soon. Thanks.